ocean. Hello, it's Mr. Chapel here. And I've swam to the bottom of the ocean as we are in our very special wow day, our wow day under the sea. And we are obviously doing lots of activities in school and at home, finding about lots of different amazing creatures, finding about the ocean itself. And obviously now I've got the pleasure of reading you a story, but when I've been swimming down into the depths of the ocean, I saw in a distance this strange, very magical vehicle moving through the ocean. Look at that. Wow. Some of you might know what this is. It might be a clue to the story that I'm going to be reading. And then inside, when you look even closer, who's this we've got? And who's this? So we've got Quasi and we've got Captain Barnacles. So Captain Barnacles and Quasi are two of the Octonauts. As some of you will know lots and lots about. And then Captain Barnacle and Quasi and the rest of the crew, Peso and, and Dashi and Captain Shellington, Shellington, they will go on different adventures through the depths of the ocean. And just like stories that you write in store, school, there's an opening, a build-up, a dilemma, a problem that's going to happen that the Octonauts need to solve, and then a resolution and an ending. So I'm going to read a story to you. You may even have time for a couple of stories. But first, so that you can actually see some of the pictures, I'm just going to change the background. So I'm going to quickly swim to the top. So just swim, 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 to, swim to the top. Oh, and I'm up here already. So I'm out of the water. I'm going to share with you a very special Octonauts book. And so I'm going to read to you the Octonauts and the Whale Shark. And some of you may know what a whale shark is from some of the work you've already done. So I'm just going to turn this way so you can see the pictures as well. See if you can see my fish in the story, maybe. So here we go. Captain Barnacles pointed up to the Octopods video link. Dashi was sending some amazing new pictures to the onboard computer. Up on the screen, the crew could hear, see her snapping photos of a squid and tropical seaweed. Where is she? Captain wondered Peso. Exploring a strange underwater cave, replied Barnacles. Shellington ran some cave data through the Octopod computer. The floor's red and wiggly, remarked Peso. Shellington pushed a button and the video link panned to a line of bumpy white rocks. Barnacles rubbed his chin. Hmm, why do those rocks look familiar? I wonder what those rocks are. The video camera zoomed in for a closer look at the rocks. That's because those rocks are teeth, gulped Shellington. And the floor is a tongue. Peso looked confused. How can a cave have teeth and a tongue? Because it's not a cave, shouted Shellington and Captain Barnacles at the same time. It's a whale shark. Barnacles pushed the octopus radio co co contact pad. Dashy, he called. You're not in a cave. You're in a whale shark. Get out now. Dashi made a splash for the exit. The whale shark's jaws were starting to close. Uh-oh, she cried. I dropped my camera. The screen blinked, then went black. Beso, commanded Barnacles. Sound the Octo alert. Octonauts to the launch bay. Some of you may know the Octonauts and sound. Why don't we all join in together? Let's, let's all say it. Octonauts to the launch bay. One more time, all of us join in. Octonauts to the launch bay. What's going to happen? There's a problem in our story. They're going to rescue her. Let's have a look. Let's, let's read on. That's why books are so magical. Wonder what's going to happen next. The whale shark 
It's the biggest fish in the sea, explained Shellington. It's so big that Darcy thought, thought its mouth was a cave. Quasi looked cross. How dare that dastardly beast swallow our mate? I'm certain he didn't do it on purpose, replied Professor Shellington. Professor Inklin, he's a filler feeder. He just opens his mouth and swallows whatever's there. A little bit of a fact here, just about the filter feeder. But there's an example of him opening his mouth and just closing. Open his mouth and closing and just swallowing whatever he gets. A filter feeder doesn't use its teeth for biting, so it just swallows whatever it's got. Tweak handed the captain a special gadget she'd been developing for just this sort of situation. This is a whale shark detector, she said. It flashes if one comes near. Barnacles, Quasi and Peso leapt into the guppy. It was time to open the opta hatch. Within seconds, the guppy was floating above a sandy seabed. That's strange, remarked the captain. According to this map, the whale shark was right here, but I don't see him anywhere. Barnacles and Quasi swam out to take a look around. All of a sudden, the giant fish glided through the gloom, swallowing the pair in a single gulp. Oh no! Quasi staggered to his feet. He'd never been inside a whale shark before. Let's look for Dashi, but going along the tongue, decided Barnacles. The pair slowly made their way past the whale's gills and squeezed through a pink spongy wall. It's a little fact here about gills, if you didn't know what the gills were, were, the whale uses gills to let water back out by keeping food in. They're going to find. They're going to find Dashi. They're going to find Dashi. How are they going to get there? They're going to find her. It's getting exciting. It's our adventure. Alone on the guppe, poor Peso was starting to panic. He'd lost radio contact with his friends. And now the whale shark was groaning at him. Ooh. Ooh. You must be sick, gasped the medic, reaching for his bag. Peso didn't think twice. If a sea creature was poorly, he had to go and help. Peso swam up to the whale shark's ear. Everything looks fine, he decided, putting away his medical torch. The whale moaned again. And when Peso touched the tummy, he moaned twice as loud before. Poor whale shark, sighed Peso. My friends must be in there. The whale shark didn't have measles or chicken pox. He had octonauts. On the other side of the sponge wall, it was eerie and dark. Quasi and Barnacle staggered and slid on the gooey floor. We seem to have landed somewhere, whispered Barnacles. Click, click, click. Quasi jumped into the captain's arms. The octonauts were not alone. Click. Dashi stepped out of the shadows, armed with her trusty camera. She'd been snapping shots of the whale shark's stomach. Artonauts, let's get up and out, all the barnacles. Totem pole. The trio scrambled into each other's shoulders, heaving themselves up all the way back up to the whale shark's mouth. Yow! Quasi tried to cratty kick away through the mighty beast's teeth, but its jaws were stuck shut tight. Outside, Peso flicked through his medical book. He had to get his friends out of the whale sharks inside. Ah, he read. If you tickle a whale shark's gills, he opens his mouth. While the medic tickled from the outside, his crewmates got ready to push from the inside. Goochie, goochie, goo, poked back at Peso. On your marks. Get set, go, bellowed Barnacles. All of a sudden, the Arctonauts tumbled out into a big, belchy burp. Peso grinned. He had freed his friends and curled the whale shark's tummy. 
When their mission was over, the Octonauts sat down to enjoy Darcy's whale shark's pictures. I can't decide which one to send into the National Seagraphic, she smiled happily. Shellington nodded. They're all amazing, Ink Inkling clapped tentacles. Send each and every one. The next photo showed Quasi jumping into the captain's arms. Ah-ha, <laughs> coughed Barnacles. Actually, not all of them, Quasi agreed. You might want to skip a few. The octopod shook with chuckles. It was a big laugh at the end of a very big adventure. And here's a little bit about the, uh, their adventure in the Captain Log. So the Captain Log, so, so Captain Barnacles would write down things and, and on that, uh, like a little journey, like a little diary of things that he's been doing. So from today's calling all astronauts. We didn't plan on exploring the inside of a whale shark, but I'm very glad that we did. We discovered all sorts of fascinating facts about the way this big friendly giant eats, swims and breathes. The whale shark is the largest fish in the sea. It's not a whale, just a very large shark. It lives in water. It eats tiny floating plants and animals and squid too. The whale shark is enormous, as big as a school bus. It swims with its mouth wide open, eating whatever floats inside. The shark scales and sponge wall keep food in and let water out. So that's lots of fascinating facts about the whale shark. So Captain Barnacles, Quasi, they've all been on an amazing adventure. And I wonder if you could actually record your own adventure could you write your own octonaut story today so after you finish this story maybe you could have your own octonauts adventure get the guppy in so our guppy that we've already shown why don't you get the guppy in and in fact who wants one more story who wants one more octonaut story I enjoyed the octonauts so much why don't we read one more if you want to join us how about octonauts and the electric torpedo rays. Oh, a torpedo, a very quick animal. Let's have a look at this story then. Mm -hmm. Full speed ahead, Dashi, or the Captain Barnacles. The octopod rushed through the ocean. It was on a tight schedule today. My friend Sandy, the sea turtle, always swims through these waters at this time of year, said Tweak. I hope we get it there in time to see her. Barnacles showed Tweak a radar picture of the deep undersea canyon. Sandy should be just on the other side, he smiled. We'll be there faster than you can say, buncher, muncher, crunchy, ow! Oh! The octopod lurched and tipped on its side. Oh no! We're losing electrical power, gasped Ashy. I can't control the ship! The captain made a lunge for the steering wheel. Hang on, everyone, he cried. This could get bumpy! The octopods crash landing on the ocean floor. Barnacles yanked on the brake. The ship was skidding straight towards the canyon. The octopod screeched to a stop millimeters away from the canyon edge. Shiver me whiskers, yelled Quasi. That was a close one. The octonauts weren't out of trouble yet. The electricity was still out and now they were late to meet Sandy. Turn it, cried Barnacles. Sang the Octo Lot, Vegemo style. Octonauts to the launch bay. Octonauts to the launch bay. Think I found the problem, Cap, announced Tweak. The ship battery is completely out of electricity. Without power, the octopod won't work. Even the octo hutch is jammed. We better check that the ship isn't damaged on the outside decided Captain Barnacles. Quasi, Peso, activate helmets. The octopod was in a dangerous situation. Here comes the dilemma part of the story. Oh no, it's a problem that's gonna need solving. The octopod was in a dangerous situation. It could fall into the canyon at any minute, frowned Peso. The crew set to work, trying to tie, try, tie the ship down. The job was done in no time. Now there's nothing to worry about, announced Quasi. The octopus is secure as... Yow! 
A freckled fish had snapped, sat, crowds me. What's the big idea stepping on my tail like that? He snapped. We didn't mean to startle you, said Captain Barnacles. How did you do that? I'm an electric torpedo ray, replied the stranger. That was a little warning. Zap. But I can make big zaps of electricity too. Barnacles grinned. The ray had just sparked an amazing idea. I wonder if you could guess what Captain Barnacle's idea is. The octopod hasn't got any electricity. And yet this amazing animal, the torpedo ray, can sparkle electricity. I wonder what you think will happen next. The Artsnauts led the ray up to the launch bay. When Barnacles explained his plan, Tweet connected a wire to the ship's battery. If their new friend could sap the wire, it would recharge the battery and give the octopod back its power. I might just get to see Sandy after all, grinned Tweet. Stand clear, called the captain. Electricity is dangerous. The ray closed his eyes and prepared to sap. But nothing happened. I guess I can only make really big saps when something scares me or when I'm eating, sighed the ray. Just then, Turnip waddled in with a tray of fish biscuits. Whoops, Turnip tripped over, sending biscuits splashing the water. The ray died for a snack. Suddenly a jolt of electricity powered up the wire. The lights flickered on for an instant, but the ray's spark was too weak. Do you have any friends that could help? asked Barnacles. The ray nodded. If he could make enough electricity to light up a whole room, a group of rays might be able to recharge the octopod. The Vegemont started loading biscuits onto the wire. There wasn't a second to lose. The Octonauts carefully lowered the snack-studded wire out through the Octo hut, following it down to the seabed. Come on, guys, called the electric torpedo ray. Dinner is served. Within seconds, the ocean was teeming with hungry rays. One by one, they started blasting the fish biscuits, sending shocks back up the wire. It's working, cried Peso. Soon the octopod's battery was full again. The octonauts cheered, but the rays kept on feeding and sapping. Watch it, shouted one. Get out of my way, yelled another. The rays were pushing and shoving so hard that the ropes holding the ship started to quiver. The octopod's rope stretched, then snapped. Sorry, shouted the rays as the octopod tumbled into the canyon. I've got to get the controls, bellowed Barnacles. The captain dived into the darkness, but the octopod was slipping out of sight. Oh no, looks as if you could use a lift, said a friendly voice. Sandy had turned up just at the right time. Barnacles hopped on to the sea turtle's back. Sandy plunged after the ship, bringing the pair level with the octo hatch. You have to jump for it, Sandy cried. Barnacles summoned all his polar bear strength. It was now or never. The octonauts and rails waited, rays waited nervously. Suddenly the octopod rose up and out of the canyon, Barnacles had made it. The friends cheered and clapped and zapped. Octonauts, he declared, the octopod is back in action. Tweak and Sandy gave each other a happy high five. Thanks for coming this way to see me, smiled the sea turtle. I hope it wasn't too much trouble. Barnacles looked up at the bumped and battered octopod. Uh, not too much trouble, Sandy, he grinned, bursting into chuckles. So again, what another great adventure they've been on. Let's see what Captain's log is this time. Calling all Octonauts, our mission to meet Sandy introduced us to a shocking new friend, the electric torpedo ray. This curious creature, can be hard to spot, but when it jolts into action, sparks fly. The electric torpedo ray. The electric torpedo ray has a flat speckled back. It makes electric shocks to sap food or other fish. It lives in shallow water. It eats fish. Octofax. The torpedo ray gives a warning zap if it feels scared. It also cre creates sparks when it gets hungry. The ray likes to bury itself in the sand during the day. So lots of different facts there about from those two different stories. So 
I hope you've enjoyed those stories. It's nice to have the Octonauts. And everybody loves the Octonauts and, and Captain Barnacles and Peso. But just like you said, just like all the stories that we write in school, they go on an adventure. They have a problem that they need to solve. So just like in the last story, their octopod it got stuck. It's on the edge of a canyon. So maybe you can write your own octonaut story today as part of our wow day. So from me and from Captain Barnacles and, and Quasi, I'd like to say have a great, great day. And we really look forward to seeing everything that you post on Class Dojo or Tapestry. Take care.